It's 1pm and that can only mean two things. I'm Chris Gilbert and this is the De-Stress Signal. The De-Stress, it's the De-Stress Signal. Thanks for joining us on a show that's packed with useful features on how to laugh, sing and generally muddle through the strange times we all find ourselves in. But what kind of show is it? Well, it's a kind of Good Morning Britain without the annoying fella, although I let you be the judge, or This Morning without any sense of what time of day it is. Or maybe it's a bit like The Big Breakfast, but without any eggs because you can't get any from the supermarket. Now we did consider other names for the show. In the running were The Isolate Late Show, uh, The Co-Video Show, and my favourite, which was Home Alone 2. But we settled on the de-stress signal because that's what we want this to be, something to raise a smile and ease your mind at lunchtime. So with the name nailed, all we needed was a snappy, rappy theme tune. And for that, cue Shuffle Tea. Now I know that you're bored, it's a sad day at best You can't leave the house and barely even can pay the rent I thought I'd be a famous rapper, now that's late to rest I'm also out of Luro and there's only sandpaper left But don't worry, welcome aboard the boat of DSS The show that's here to help you to cope and ease your stress Before you go through all the food in your home and eat what's left And before long you overdose on Easter eggs So let's take a break, like we blew the rest whistle Raise some money for age and get those checks scribbled Getting a dose of creativity made dead simple Relax and listen live to the de-stress signal now you don't see Dan Walker rapping on BBC Breakfast, do you? No, you don't. So, what's in store for you on the show today? Well, just like any low-budget daytime TV, we've got treats aplenty, including, but not limited to, relationship advice with therapist Lucy Beresford. We've got music, comedy, magic. We've got Judge Rinder. We've got parenting tips. And would you believe it, we've even got some live sport for you. And it's all for a good cause. Now... We know it's a tough time for everyone at the moment, but there are some of us that need help now more than ever. Together we will get through this. The coronavirus pandemic has changed life for everyone, but some older people are among the most affected. Age UK is determined to be there during the crisis, but we can't do it without your support. Now you can donate by visiting the website on the screen right now and you can also share it anywhere you want. Tweet it, um, TikTok it if you want. TikTok's great, isn't it? I love TikTok. I mean, I've never downloaded it myself because I'm 50. It's not for me. I'm more of a sports guy. And with that in mind, let's turn our attention to sports. And if we've got the timing right, we'll be able to join Rob Rouse for the pre-race build-up. Thank you, Chris. Yes, excitement really beginning to build here in the back garden at the Peak District. The hens, as you can see, are raring to go and are certainly attacking the recording equipment, which is a sign that they really are ready to show some explosive power and speed down the length of this back garden course. Overnight, we had a small amount of rain, so the going is quite soft. The girls will be making their way down between the hose pipes, which mark the edges of the course, over the vegetable planting pots here and up to the finish line. It's got the makings of a fine race and we look forward to seeing you later on. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Rob, and we'll be joining him later for the big chicken race live. But before we go any further, we have an urgent travel update. Oh, for sake. Oh dear, it looks like Hornsey West train set station will be closed for some time, so I'd urge people to find alternative routes, of course, only if their journey is critical. Although, to be fair, train set journeys probably don't count. Mm -hmm. Now, so many things have been affected uh, by what's going on, not least the release of the new James Bond film, which has left the secret agent with no time to die with time on his hands.
right, little buddy. There you go. It's loads better. There's so much to do now, isn't there? There's so much work. There's so much more work. There's housework. There's homeschooling for some. And so let's meet a rather remarkable woman called Kirsty Beckman, who seems to be handling the challenge exceptionally well. Well, Chris, like you guys, we're all at home now as well. Um, there's still so many jobs that need to be done, but of course we do need to be homeschooling our children now as well and sticking within the national curriculum. So allow me to show you how I'm going to be doing this. Right, now what I want you to do is enter all of these numbers from these receipts into this spreadsheet, but make sure that you stay within the HMRC guidelines about what's claimable. Okay. okay? Yeah. That's it, son. Really work those quads and the weird down toys. Okay, yeah. Mum. Dust sticks to objects because it has static charge, and this duster has got volume and an electric charge that's going to attract the dust. And I want you to go all around the house so you learn so much about static and electricity. Yeah. yeah. The Buddhists believe that only by entering a deep, still, contemplative state could you find true enlightenment. I want you to sit over there in silence and really explore the beautiful world of Buddhism for around okay. three hours. Uh. Hugely valuable advice there from Kirsty, which I'm sure many of you will be taken on board over Easter. Now, we've reached that part of the show where we remind you why we're supporting Age UK. Now, we've got three celebrity messages. Well, we've actually got two and my mum, but she's kind of a celebrity to me, so we kept her in. Yo, 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 it's Troy the Magician here. Yes, I have a purple do-rag. Um, quarantine lockdown is turning us all crazy, uh, even me. Am I here cleaning glasses using my, uh, my do-rag? But what's important is that we get through this together. We stock up on our vitamin C and we donate if we can. And make sure you're staying healthy. Hi, de-stress signal. Uh, this is Judge Rinder here. Um, Everybody is struggling with loneliness, but even in the best of times, um, members of our elderly community, our neighbours, our friends, our loved ones, really really do suffer it's challenging times for all of us but if you get a chance and you've got anything left i know so few of us do please donate to age uk so much love we'll see each other on the other side the sun will come out i promise wake up oh hello i'm midge i'm chris's mum and i'm 91 i'm very fortunate because i have the family come round to see me at a distance, of course, and I do realise that other people aren't quite as fortunate as I am. And so I would urge you to support Aid UK. Thank you. Thank you to Troy, Judge Rinder and my mum. Please help Aid UK in any way you can. Now, my mum's lucky because my nieces visit her and, and deliver food to her doorstep. But with some of us, we still have to go outside for the essentials. So here's our resident consumer expert, Alexa Strum, with her shopping report. Hi everyone, um, uh, the last three things I panic bought this week were as follows, and I'm gonna start with number one in no particular order. It was a lipstick, I don't know why, but I was just thinking that like maybe if the Amazon man comes and he's quite fit and he stands at the bottom of my drive and like he's wearing a hazmat suit, but he gives me a wink, at least I'll have lipstick on. Number two, I bought myself a little plastic guitar, this is Strum. I have no idea why it doesn't make any sound at all, listen. Completely useless. I should have bought food, but it's so cute and it's green. That's my favourite colour. Number three, I bought um hairband because I'm going grey and quite frankly, um I'm quite vain. I mean maybe I could just like I don't know, get a wig or something or a hat or a paper bag, or maybe I could just stop filming myself. I mean, no, that's unthinkable. Um so that's the three things I panic bought this week. I'm um, Marcus, stay tuned. I'll come up with some more next week. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for that, Alexis. And she's not the only one who's been feeling a little bit anxious of late. Let's be honest, it's not every day we all find ourselves in the middle of a global pandemic. But fret not, help is at hand. And this is something you can all join in with at home. We are joined by our resident wellbeing coach, Andy Hicks, and he's gonna take us through a de-stressing exercise. Thanks, Chris. So what I want to teach people today is a really simple 30 second way to reduce your anxiety. 
It's a breathing technique called 7-Eleven. And what it does is it switches your nervous system from the fight or flight or sympathetic nervous system into the parasympathetic or rest and digest nervous system, which means you can unwind, relax, and everything in your body just kind of slows down a bit. So all you need to do for this exercise is count your breathing. As you breathe in, count to seven. And as you breathe out, count to 11. Without changing how you're breathing, just matching the counting to the breath. You can do it with your eyes open or eyes closed. Doing it with me now. Up to seven as you breathe in and 11 as you breathe out. Seeing if you can get the 11 right at the end of the out breath. You can do it anytime, anywhere. When you're in bed, when you're sitting at home, if you suddenly start feeling anxious about what you're watching on the news or whatever, your focus will be more in the present moment, your breathing will slow down, and you will stop thinking about whatever it was that was making you feel anxious. Feel better? Of course you do, the magic of Andy Hicks. So from a man surrounded by birds and birdsong, let's segue seamlessly to the dulcet, soothing tones of Mr. John Archer. Hey, let's all start. to the show we ask you to share on Twitter how you lot have been de-stressing and if we've got the timing correct we're going to join Matt in the kitchen who's doing two things he's cooking lunch and he's handling your tweets Matt what's going on hello mate yeah uh, soup's almost done so that we're, we're good for that we have had some lovely people messaging Sophie Ralph um, says that she to de-stress she's been running down the canal in the sunshine and then finishing off with loads of gin and all the chocolate um, Today is different, she says. I'm taking a 1 p.m. lunch break to watch De-Stress Live. That's very nice. Thank you, Sophie. Thanks, Sophie. Um, rather intriguingly, a guy who, who's calling himself Rice Count Live. Right. Um, hey, guys, I've been counting rice grains in my kitchen. It's super calming and makes me so happy. Uh, we can't wait to find out more about that guy. And lastly, um, and this is, this is great, uh, right. better, ball, better Bell Saul, sorry, has learnt a new skill and taking up the family haircut challenge. He says, not bad for a first effort, and I think we can show you the picture now. Wow, wow. fabulous, fabulous work. I can't wait until lockdown is over and I'll be coming to you for a haircut. I don't know about you, Chris. <laughs> See you later. Thanks, Matt. So, look, if you're anything like Matt and I, you've probably been slowly going out of your mind being cooped up in a flat for two weeks or more. So it's not easy being in any kind of relationship right now. And that's why we're very lucky that our resident therapist, Lucy Beresford, is on hand with some tips for couples to survive the coronavirus crisis. Hello, De-Stress Signal. Now, being locked down with our loved one can very quickly mean that they stop being our loved one. How can you stop that happening? Here are my top tips. Don't let your issues fester. So don't sweep them under the carpet thinking, oh, I can't raise this. Just remember that when you do talk to your partner about something that has wound you up or something that just needs clearing the air, remember to sit down and talk, but also give them space to talk back. So it's very much about active listening. 
They listen to you, you listen to them. And that way you can air grievances without it escalating. Set yourself a challenge as a couple that you can do together. So whether that's a new gym routine, maybe learning a piece of music on the piano, some songs, new recipes, uh, a new language perhaps, or both read a novel and then talk about it with each other like a mini book club. Always have something that you can do together as a couple and grow. Activate your social network so that for certain evenings every week you're doing something virtually with your group of friends and your partner is doing something with their group of friends, preferably in a separate room. You're keeping in, in touch with other people, you're keeping connected, but you're not always doing everything with your partner. Create a sanctuary space for yourself and your partner. So no matter how small your living space, carve out somewhere that is specifically yours. Maybe you've got the bean bag in that corner of the room while your partner has got the sofa in another part. Create those spaces, it could be in different rooms, so that you know if you do need decompression time, you've both got somewhere separate to go. Exceptionally helpful stuff there from Lucy Beresford. Now, we don't actually own any bean bags here, but as you can see, I've created my sanctuary space, my safe space, my territory in the lounge area. So, Matt, if, if I have the lounge as my sanctuary space, are you happy to have the kitchen as your sanctuary space? I can confirm I'm happy in the kitchen. Perfect. So that means that, Matt, you'll be doing all of the cooking and I'll be doing all of the very important sitting in the lounge, which is so crucial um, at these testing times. But hang on a minute, what's that I hear? <coughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is the sound of a cockerel, which means, yep, yeah, I think we can. We can go live now and join Rob Rouse and his wife Helen for the big chicken race. Right. So, they're under starter's orders, there's Bob. There's Mrs. Muck, uh, Muck, Feathers. Muck Feathers, thank you. There's one on my back. I don't know why there's one on my back. No, it's the, it's the inaugural chicken race. It's already got out of hand. And I had to stand as orders. Three, two, one. Come on, chickens. Come on. Oh, no, it's been an error. Uh, it's been a food spillage. Food spillage. Over the cup. Will she make it over the jump? Can she get over the jump? Yes, she's over the jump. Come on. Come on, just the final furlong now. Bob's just got to make it over the line, Bob. Come on, Bob. There's the winning line, and Bob is the winner by at least a body length. What a race that was, Bob. How are you feeling? Anything you'd like to say for the viewers at home, Bob? I think that says it all, Chris. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Rob. Cracking stuff, I think you'd agree, from the Peak District Chicken Race arena and before we go we just want to urge you to give anything that you can to Aid UK because they need your help now more than ever. So we are going to leave you but we're going to leave you with a cracking song by Byron Gold and the Gold Vocal Collective. The song is called I Am. So we do hope to see you again. Stay safe, stay stress free. We've been the De-Stress Signal.
stay safe. Stay home, stay safe, guys. Stay home, stay safe.